Next, our candidates for 14th U.S. Representative District, Andrew Jarvie. And I don't believe Joyce or Wager are here. Mr. Jarvie, your three minute statement. Okay, well, unfortunately, neither of my opponents showed up tonight to tell you how important things are and what they're working on. Um, but what I can tell you is I am from the area. I was, grew up in North Kingsville through 1987 when my parents both lost their jobs. We ended up relocating to the south. But as soon as I graduated from high school, I moved back to the area. Um, I started out serving as a volunteer firefighter with Sheffield, then became a paid on call firefighter with the city of Conneaut, working into a part-time position, becoming what they call us as full-time part-timers because in the state of Ohio, as a part-time firefighter, you can work 48 hours a week with no overtime or benefits because you have so much downtime, allegedly. But I can tell you back then, in 1996, I was making a whopping $4.75 an hour as a part-time firefighter. I injured my back in 2001 on a different job for a second time, which ended my fire service career. I went back to college as soon as, able, as I was physically able to, first getting an associate's degree in paralegal studies at Lakeland Community College, then working through my bachelor's, working full-time at university hospitals in their corporate law office, getting a bachelor's in public safety management from Cleveland State University, then receiving a position with Columbus State Community College as their emergency management coordinator, so I can relate to what they're talking about, the emergency operations center, and finishing up a master's in public administration. During this time, I really began to understand and see the failures in Congress, the failures of our administrations to do what's right for the people. And having grown up in this area and seen the damage done by NAFTA, CAFTA, and all these other poor trade agreements, I realized we need someone in Congress that's going to fight to repeal these because they'll try to tell you these trade agreements are great for the people of the United States. They're not. They're great for corporations. They're bad for Asheville County. They're bad for Ohio. They're bad for our country because they're not creating a competitive environment. They're creating an unlevel playing field where these corporations can move south of the border opening up companies that they're dumping toxic substances just like our corporations did back in the earlier years that were spent millions of dollars cleaning up and also exploiting the indigenous population for pennies on the dollar where they would otherwise be paying Americans a living wage. I think we need to repeal these, but then we also have to work on issues of restoring our democracy. As we've seen in this current election, it's a mess. And from the Department Democratic Party rigging the primary to deny Bernie Sanders, to coronate Hillary Clinton for this election, to other issues that are going on. We need to fix our democracy. We need to end gerrymandering and stuff like that. And those are some, just a few of the issues that I can see working on, as well as a constitutional amendment to overturn Citizens United and getting corporate money out of our election process. I believe I'm, time's up there, or close Thank to Thank you. What are your, I can pull his back. What are your opinion about gerrymandering, which you just mentioned, causing the deadlock in Congress? Well, part of the problem with gerrymandering, if you aren't familiar, is each state legislature creates the congressional districts. And whoever the party that's in power in the past has had the power to create those districts so that they're less competitive for their opponent. So you, the voter, are denied mm, having a competitive election where you can be representative best by mm, your potential candidates. So, for example, of course, this new issue that recently passed, it's an improvement, but it still has a long ways to go because the way it works is um, each of the parties I know can appoint two people, but then if one party controls the three state level elected positions, that gives you a five to two ratio on determining what the congressional districts are, not to mention the fact that you have no voice for independents or minority parties to determine what these congressional, congressional districts are. So again, you the voter are being denied a fair opportunity to choose someone that's going to be right for you. What is your thought on campaign financing of these well, again, 
again, I believe we need to get a constitutional amendment to overturn Citizens United because as that was determined by the Supreme Court that money is free speech, I think that's an absolute lie. I think our forefathers, when they drafted the Constitution, and they didn't have any language about corporations in there, they did that for a reason, because corporations were not intended to have, voice, have a voice within our government. The government is supposed to be by the people, for the people, not by the corporations, for the corporations. So corporate money should be completely and com totally eliminated from the electoral process. And in fact, I think there need to be laws that if it is so found that they're influencing the election through money, that there should be felonies where white collar crimes are brought and people are jailed. Thank you, Mr. Jarvie. We have no more questions. Thank you.